What is a binary number and how to convert them? Number systems are a way to express or represent numbers and there are lots of different number systems. But you are probably only familiar with the decimal system because it's the one everyone uses. Decimal, the first part there is dec which means 10. Like a decathlon has 10 different events or a decagon is a polygon with 10 different sides. We probably use the system as a default because the average person has 10 fingers so we can use them to count. With decimal or the 10 number system, we use 10 different digits to represent a number from 0 to 9. So for example, we have a 1 or a 6 or a 9. But the moment we go above 9, we need to use a new column, the tens column, and reset the other columns numbers back to the lowest possible digit. And so we keep going up until 99, we have the same issue where we have to go to the hundreds column to get the next number. And we keep going with the thousands and the ten thousands. Now a computer can't process 10 different states. So you can't tell the difference between a 1 or a 5 or an 8 or a 3. Because it's electronic, all it can really process is a pulse of electricity or no pulse. What we would call an on state or an off state. The presence of current or the absence of a current. So there are only two possible options. So that's why they prefer to use a binary number system. Bi meaning two, like a bicycle has two wheels or a biathlon which has two different events. So with the binary system, we only have two different digits, a zero or a one. Notice with number systems, the number of possible digits range from zero until one before the number system's number. A zero in decimal and binary is the same. And a 1 in decimal and binary is also the same. The problem is when we get to a 2 in decimal, we have run out of binary digits. So we need to use a new column and reset the previous numbers back to the lowest possible digits. So that's why a 2 looks like this in binary. That's also why people don't always understand my joke when I say that there are 10 types of people in the world, those that understand binary and those that don't. Because the 10 is actually a 1, 0 in binary. The 2 in binary looks like a 10. And then the 3 will also go up by 1. But then at the 4, we have run out of digits again. So in a new column, just like with the decimal, when we go up to the hundreds column, we need another column and reset all the numbers back to the lowest values to get a 4 in binary. And so we continue. But Mr. Long, how do we know when we are using a decimal number system or a binary? How do I know the difference between 100 in decimal and 100 meaning 4 in binary? Well, in mathematics, we indicate the number system as a subscript after the number. That's what we should be doing with all our numbers. But because everyone mainly uses the decimal or 10 number system, when we write decimal numbers in everyday life, we tend to leave the subscript out. So if you see a number without a subscript, then by default, we can assume that it is a decimal number. So that is basically how computers understand and store numbers using binary noughts and ones. So let's talk about how we can convert numbers between binary and decimal. We are going to start with taking a binary number and converting it to a decimal number. Before that, we need to understand how decimal numbers work in order to give us a clue on how to convert binary numbers. Let's take the number 35,782. At primary school, you may have been taught to divide this number into units, tens, hundreds, etc. So let's do that. Here we have two units, eight tens, seven hundredths, five thousands, and three tens of thousands. To get this number, we multiply each value with its column number, and then we add those numbers together. So we take two times the units, then eight times the tens, then seven times the hundredths, and so on. Then we add all these products together to get 35,782. But this is the 10 number system. And the column number can be written as 10 to the power of something. So the tens column is actually 10 to the power of 1. And the hundredths column is actually 10 to the power of 2. The thousands column is 10 to the power of 3 and so on. Each column is 10 to the power of the next counting number. But if we continue this pattern backwards, then the units is technically 10 to the power of 0, which in mathematics is 1, so it still works out. So let's think about a decimal number system as each column is basically the number system, in this case the 10, to the power of counting numbers going up. But remember, the first one always starts at 0. Then we multiply each digit with its own column value, and then we add those together to get the decimal number. Now let's apply the same logic to a binary number, like 1101101. This is a binary number. Each column is represented by the number system's value, a 2 in this case, to the power of increasing counting number. But what must we start at always? A 0 first. 
then a 1, then a 2, then a 3, and so on. So 2 to the power of 0 is 1, so that represents the 1s. The second column is 2 to the power of 1, which represents the 2s. The third column is 2 to the power of 2, which represents the 4s. The fourth column is 2 to the power of 3, which represents the 8s, and we can keep going on like this. To find the next number, all you have to really do is double the previous number. Then let's apply the same strategy as we did with decimal numbers. We take each digit, multiply it by its column value. So 1 times 1, then 0 times 2, then 1 times 4, and so on. And then add these answers together. When the column is a 1, it's the same as just using the number of that column. In this case, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 4 is 4, and the same with the 8, 32, and 64. The columns with a 0 end up being 0 because 0 times any number is equal to 0. So after adding these numbers, we see that 1101101 in binary is the same as 109 in decimal. Basically, the easy way to simply add the column values of all those that have a 1. And that's a quicker way when using binary only. So there we have it. 1101101 in binary is the same as 109 in decimal. So let's take another example with 11001. And the first column is 2 to the power of 0, then 1, then 2. Then we multiply each digit to the column value, so 1 times 1, 0 times 2, and so on. These products are going to end up being 100816. And now we add those values together to get 16 plus 8 plus 1, which equals to 25. And that's how to convert a binary number to decimal. But what about a decimal number to binary? Now we are going to have to use a special mathematical technique named after me. Yes, I'm quite famous in the mathematical world. The technique is called long division, because I'm Mr. Long. Actually, it was developed by a mathematician called Henry Briggs in 1600, but I'm not sure why he named it after me, but anyway. So let's take 109 in decimal because we know what that answer is going to be. We take the number to be converted and we are going to continually divide the number by the number system we want. In this case, a 2 because we want to convert it to binary. And we are going to do this continually until we have nothing. Nothing meaning 0 left to divide. Remember, it must be 0. And we need to take note of the remainders each time we divide. You remember remainders. Remainders are not the numbers after the comma when you use a calculator, but it's what's left over after you have divided. For example, if you divide 15 by 6, that means 6 can go into 15 twice, and then you'll have 3 left over. That 3 is the remainder, not the 0.5 if we use a calculator. So let's start. 109 divided by 2 equals 54, but there'll be 1 left over as a remainder. Remember, it's 1, not 0.5 if you're using your calculator. Then we divide that answer by 2. So 54 divided by 2 is now going to be 27, but the remainder is a 0 because the 2 goes into 54 evenly. But we still record that 0. Then 27 divided by 2 is 13 with 1 left over, which is the remainder. 13 divided by 2 is 6 with 1 remainder. 6 divided by 2 is 3 with 0 remainder. 3 divided by 2 is 1 with 1 remainder. Now remember, we must keep going until there is nothing left to divide, or 0. We have a 1, but that's not 0. We must keep going until this is a 0. So 1 divided by 2 is 0 with 1 left over. And now that we're at 0, we can stop. I want you to look at all those remainders, but I want you to look at them from the bottom up. Take that 1101101, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, and there we have the answer. 109 is equal to 1101101 one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one in binary. So in summary, we take a number, we divide it continually by the number system we want to convert it to, in this case a 2, and we keep track of all the remainders, all the leftover values, and we arrange them from the bottom up. Because we started from the bottom, now we're here. So let's take a look at the number 28. If we divide it by 2, we get 14 remainder 0. 14 divided by 2 is 7 remainder 0. 7 divided by 2 is 3 remainder 1. 3 divided by 2 is 1 remainder 1. Remember, we keep going until we reach 0. So 1 divided by 2 is 0 remainder 1. Now we look at all those remainders from the bottom up, and we get 11100 in binary, which means that 28 in decimal is equal to 11100 in binary. And there you have it. You can now convert binary numbers to decimal and decimal numbers to binary. By the way, when you have fractions in decimal numbers, we technically use 10 to the power of negative 1 and then 10 to the power of negative 2. We just follow the natural order of numbers past the 0. So that's where we get the negative 1 and the negative 2 and so on. But we can apply the same with binary numbers that have fractions. 
we know about 2 to the power of 0 and 2 to the power of 1 and so on. But to do fractions, we just follow the natural sequence of numbers going backwards. So we go 2 to the negative 1 and 2 to the negative 2 and 2 to the negative 3 and so on. But if you remember your maths, 2 to the negative 1 is just 1 over 2, which is the same as a half. And you can use your calculator for the other numbers. And so technically you can work out fractions in binary 2 now. So there you have it. Now I'll try to convert these binary numbers to decimal. And then once you've done that, try to convert these decimal numbers to binary. Pause the video now. If you want the answers, you can use an online binary calculator. You can just search for it on Google. Or you can use your computer's calculator app. Search for it, or you can use the Windows key plus R together, and then type in C-A-L-C, and click OK. When the calculator is open, click on the button in the top left-hand corner, and then click on the programmer mode. You can now see that the decimal mode is selected. So if you type in 109, you'll notice that the answer for it is in the binary section there under bin. And there you can see it's 1101101. If I click on that bin part over there, You'll notice that I only have access to the ones and the zeros, which is correct because we can only input binary numbers in this option. So if I'm in the bin section and I type in 11100, you'll see that the decimal number is a 28. So there we go. Now go and practice those conversions and realize that you can understand how computers see numbers. For more computer terminology, please subscribe to our channel at Miss Long Computer Terms. Follow us on TikTok at Miss Long Education. Check out our computer literacy channel at Miss Long IT and Cat. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.